Football is one of the world's greatest and most widely watched sport of the 21st century. Virtually every country has a young boy or a girl somewhere kicking a ball about with friends or by themselves, dreaming of being that global megastar. But what's the reason for this magnetic appeal to the sport? To get closer to that answer, we must dig into the history of the beautiful game as we know it. Now it's said that football as we've come to know it today was created in Britain by the British. A sport which had a lot of social pressure, you know, it was during a time when industrialization was happening, you know, urbanization, everybody's moving to the town to work. And so a lot of the folks wouldn't be playing the game as much. They were busy working, let's be fair. And so the game found its way in public schools as a leisure time activity. And some of these schools back then, they're probably more popular now, were like Cambridge, Winchester and Eton. Now by 1848, most schools had accepted the rules and codification of the game as pioneered by the University of Cambridge. And many of the participants who would have participated in the game while at school, when they graduated or they moved on, you know, friends came together, they started clubs in different cities and different parts of the town, and then they would compete. And in competing, they carried forward the Cambridge rules as their way of bringing some level of order to their game now even with that there are still disputes and let's be real everybody wasn't using the cambridge rules so there were still matters that needed to be resolved and so in 1863 everybody came together and they had some discussions and they were able to come to a consensus about what the rules should be and what they agreed upon that day has formed the foundation of what is now known as the modern game. It was also during this time period that the FA was born, also known as the Football Association, and the, the prohibition of all handling of the football except for by the goalkeeper. Now, just a quick, quick side note. Football, even though the average person doesn't refer to it as association football that name is the root of where the term soccer came from so many of us may think it was the americans who for some strange and crazy reason came up with soccer the word was actually created in england now those foundations charted the path for what we have now and hence you can understand why these clubs in england mean so much to the fans as many clubs have their roots dating back to the late 19th century, I should say. However, even though that's been the story we've been told, in China, for example, long before football was even being played in Europe, they were playing a game in China called, I'm just going to spell it, C-U-J-U. I can't even pronounce that word. I was going to say Kuju, but believe me, guys, that's not, that's not how it's pronounced. Believe me. But what started to create a bit of controversy was the, the governing body of football had publicly attributed the beautiful game we play today as a product of the ancient Chinese game. And Seth Blatter was quoted as saying, as honoring China saying, the cradle of the earliest forms of football. Now it is believed this game has been a part of Chinese culture dating back to the 2nd and 3rd century BC, over 2000 years ago. The name literally translates to kickball and is believed to be a feature of the latter stages of the Han Dynasty as a form of entertainment, military training, and in the view of the Chinese poet Li Yu, it served as a metaphor for leading a good life. If you watched old Japanese Chinese films like I did growing up, especially the Kung Fu or the Karate ones, um, you'd notice that a, a lot of what they do, they tend to bring philosophy in it. And they weren't the only ones, but... I only said that to say you could see how they could philosophize football. Now, Chinese officials believe the sport was exported to the Europeans, such as Romans, Greeks, and then this ultimately would have found its way into Britain and maybe other parts of Europe and eventually evolved into what we have now. Not surprisingly, as is with many things in Europe which in later years have been said to not originate from the West, a former British historian, Tom Holland, rejects these notions and states, I'm afraid I don't know anything about the classical origins of football, for the simple reason they don't exist. 
kicking something found kicking something around is an obvious human activity that various people in various parts of the world may or may not have engaged in such activities does not prove that they were originators of football so here we have a, a dismissal mind you this is part of Chinese culture. This is not like we saw it on some bedrock and we said, oh, you know, maybe the Chinese used to play this. This is embedded in their culture coming from that time till now. Now, despite opposing views that historians or pundits or anyone may have on the history of the game, the modern game, few cultures or peoples have been credited with contributions to the sport, or I should say a few cultures. So it's not just the Chinese. So the Japanese, who played a game called and guys yeah when you hear it you will know kemari let me know how this is pronounced guys which is mainly about juggling the ball which is made of deer skin roughly eight inches in diameter then we have the greeks who are said to have played a ball kicking game called episcrius which allowed for the use of hands however it is often said to be more similar to the sport of rugby and they have the romans who had to control a greece around 146 bc they played what was then called or pastum, which is said that Julius Caesar utilized a sport on a much smaller field than that used by the Greeks to improve physical fitness of the Roman military. Now, not widely mentioned or spoken of are the possible origins of the sport in Mesoamerica, even predating the conception of the sport in China. Now, what is clear is that all countries had an affinity to kicking a ball. Whether for leisure, military, exercise, or even part of religious rites, this I believe is the thread that connects us all and makes this sport so popular today. Not to mention the exceptional application of capitalism in the sport. I mean, I'd be foolish to think it's just the intangibles why the sport is so popular. After all, football is a billion dollar business.